<coughs> excuse me, is going to be focused around um, lead conversion and pretty much any topic around that on how you guys manage your leads, what do you do when you get them, what do you do, you know, once you've had dialogue with someone, et cetera, whatever you guys want to talk about, that's what we'll cover. So, um, Lewis, are you unmuted? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. So you guys, I know you guys had a lot of questions in the group. Let's go ahead and start firing away. What what information do you guys have? Or, I mean, what questions do you guys have that we might be able to provide information on um, from a you know lead conversion, lead nurturing perspective? Um, go ahead and start asking your questions here, and I'll, I'll input I'll put my input on a couple of things, and I'll, I'll show you guys a tool that we've already seen once before. But we'll go over it again so you guys can can check this out and then talk to your lenders about it. Um, so far, Mike Porter, what's up, Mike? How are you? Um, is there a library we can get access to for different types of ads that have been successful? Um, Mike, are you referring to to my ads, like different ads that I've run? Um, you know, because so, every time I say this, I end up having to address it, but. Um, I don't I don't typically like to talk about the training in here, but since you asked the question, I have to. Um, I don't put all of the ads out there for everyone because I do train people in different territories and they do pay for that. So, you know, everybody gets one ad in their territory. Um, I can't give out multiples because if someone else trains in that territory, I don't cross people over um, and use the same ads in the same areas. That That would not be good. Um, so I, I don't have those available. Um, let's see. Hey, Joni, how are you? Let's see. Any Anyone adding income criteria to Facebook? Um, Mike, Lewis, you might want to you want to answer that question, um, and I'll, I'll add my two cents on it. Mike's asking, does anyone add income criteria to Facebook ads? I'll, I'll let you cover that, and then I'll I'll, I'll piggyback you on that one. <clears throat> Actually, um, um, when William helped me with, with the training, um, that was one of the things that that he helped me with was targeting um, an income uh, uh, income areas on there. Now, what I've seen in my area is that it um, it seemed to to I guess it wasn't quite as accurate um, because I was getting a, a lot of people that uh, weren't within those. Uh, those uh, income brackets. Um, I think uh, maybe they had, you know, people were falsifying some of the information because you know not everything on the internet's you know truthful. So um, it's something that I'll have to, that I'm going to play with and and adjust over the time. But uh, um, even with putting the income brackets in there, um, I had a tremendous amount of response on the ad that uh, uh, William helped me with. Yeah, so I'll follow that up. So, Mike, per personally, to answer to answer your question, I, I I'm not a fan. I think Lewis will tell you I'm not a fan of the income brackets because I question the accuracy. However, in some areas, it you know it works. Um, Lewis, for example, it, it worked well. I think when you get into bigger areas like you know Houston or or bigger cities like Atlanta or something like that. It starts to kind of lose its its accuracy a little bit, um, and and it may cause you to either put more people in or leave people out of the marketing that that uh, should otherwise be there. Um, so again, it's really a case by case basis, but it's not something that I typically do when when I'm targeting an ad. <clears throat> um, I hope that answers your question. So Andrew. Um, in, in response to your question, Andrew's question was perhaps a crowdsource library of what works for different people in different areas, markets submitted by each. You know, I I would consider that. However, you know, if my ads slipped into that library somehow, you know, it, it wouldn't be a good thing. So that's not something that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do in that group. Um, you know, you guys are free to chat amongst yourselves and everything. But you know, my my emails, I mean, my my stuff that I have for the training is copywritten and the and the and the pictures are. Are owned by me, so I want to make sure that they stay that way, and that and that people aren't getting and competing with you all who have taken my my training in in uh, in your own area because of that. So I hope you guys I hope you guys can kind of get where I'm coming from on there. 
Um, Jim, so Jim, Mike, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what Jim said. He's tried income criteria and his lead slowed way down. And that's what I'm talking about. So Jim is in Dallas, bigger market. It's, it's harder for Facebook to get the accuracy right on that. And that's what I found in Austin as well. Um, that the accuracy is lacking on the income section um, when running ads in, in, in bigger cities. So that kind of answers your question right there, Mike, because you know, you're, you're in my market. So, so you can kind of get where I'm coming from there. Um, somebody asked why they can't. I think that, I think that using the income bracket there does, in my case, helps to filter out some of the garbage. Um, cause most of the leads that I, that I do get, able to do something with right right I mean it's it's kind of hit or miss like I say it's, Lewis is, a, is in a is in a smaller area so it's it, it made it's easier for you know wherever the data is coming from whether it be the credit bureau or bureau or or whatever agency that that uh, is data sharing with Facebook to get that information it's, it's probably a lot easier for them to pull in that area so, Tina asked what do you do when you get the leads. Do you use a script? If so, can you share? So, here, you know, we'll just take turns on this one, Lewis. I'll let you. I'll let you hit, then I'll piggyback you on this. Okay. I, I said, and and I don't know whether we're doing this or not yet, but uh, in some of the discussion threads, we got to have um, talk about uh, get Riley now, and people use Riley. Uh, I decided to try the. The, the trial and um, hey uh, Lewis I don't know well, if it's where you're standing but you're you're cutting out um, pretty good okay all right is that there, better there you go that's much better yeah okay yeah I started using Riley um, to follow up because I wanted something that was going to be able to help me follow up 24 7 and I uh, wanted something that was a little bit more interactive than a, just a, an auto respond through a screen with a text I, I used Riley on the trial. They were great. Um, I continued to use that. I left, and I haven't even really, I, I, I haven't even really altered their scripts. I let them run with it, and uh, the conversations that they start are, are great. Um, and then when it gets to a point where I need to take it over, I step in, and uh, I've even gone as far as using it as with my follow up on there too. If somebody's not responding, then I'll. Uh, Riley now allows you to claim the conversation, and I can text you know a message to try to spark a conversation a little bit later, uh, something a little bit more specific, and then I can unclaim it and go about my business. And I may be with an appointment or a you know, meeting or, or or driving or something like that. And I'll, if they respond, then Riley picks up and they they start on with them, and then I can take over when I'm ready again. I love Riley to help to help with my initial follow. -up. And they they contact the leads within a matter of minutes of them coming in, which is what we want. So even if I'm asleep, they're following up. <clears throat> right, right. Okay. So I'll add to that. So you know, I think Riley's another one of those those that work different in different areas. I've heard some really great things about Riley um, that work in some areas, and I've heard some others that just say, you know, it just didn't really hit in my area. I'm one of the people where it didn't really hit my area, but I, you know, I'm in a bigger market. There's a lot, whole lot of advertising going on here. Um, so people, I think people here kind of know uh, when you're hitting them with that. But Tina, um, to touch on your scripts comment, me personally, I don't use scripts. I feel like clients know when you're using a script. And if that's the first interaction you have with a client and they can tell you're reading off of something, you've lost them before you, before you even start it. Um, I feel like you should have something, you know, if you're if you're going after a certain type of lead or they're coming into a certain type of of ad, you should just be ready to talk to that offer or whatever it is you you've you've used to draw them in, and and have a natural conversation. That's my personal uh, opinion on that. I hope that answered your question. All right. So Christine asked, when you're reaching out to a lead, are you using a script? So same thing. So Christine, that's uh. You know, that applies there as well. Um, somebody with the name Realtor, you know, do I find scripts helpful? I think that's really all in personal preference, in, in my opinion. Um, Lewis, I mean, if you have something to, 
to add to that, you can. But me personally, I, I don't find the scripts helpful. I find it helpful to just be uh, myself when I'm on the phone and just talk to them I, for the purpose. Yes, I completely agree with there. I think scripts are something that are very made. Got some. Hey, you're cutting out pretty bad. Somebody that doesn't really have a background in sales and doesn't know where to go. I think it's. I think scripts have their place when uh, when you're. Uh, when you're trying to get somebody trained, but you need to you need to use them very loosely as a guideline. It's there just to give them a kind of a framework, in my opinion, and then they're able to have a genuine conversation with somebody and just use the basis or the points from the script as you know uh, as, as as something to form their own conversation with. They need to be themselves. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's good for just you know maybe brush up on them and then you know. Get, get kind of a baseline in your head of what to talk about, but I think if you sit there and you read off of a script, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, Absolutely. <clears throat> so Linda asks, what is Riley? Is it like Lion Desk or Zapier? If not Zapier, what is Zapier good for and, and what are the best zaps? So, all right, so I'll, <laughs> I'll cover this. It's a multi, multi-tiered question. Um, so Riley... Uh, Linda is is a service that you can pay when when your leads come in they're integrated into your CRM it's it's people live on the other end and they start a conversation through text message with your lead and they'll hold that conversation until you're ready to take it over and then according to Lewis now once you've claimed the conversation and you start interacting with the um, the lead if you want to unclaim it it's my understanding that they will take the conversation back over is that correct Lewis Yes, sir. They certainly will. That's a pretty cool feature. That that's going to give me a reason to try them again. So that I like that. So, um, and then now to touch on the other one, uh, Lion Desk is a CRM, um, and Zapier is just a bridge. Zapier, think of Zapier as like an information highway. It moves, it moves data from one tool to another tool that that don't have connections with each other. So, Zapier bridges that gap. Um, they they take out the the need to do things manually. Um, they don't have connections with every single uh, platform on the planet. But you know, if you wanted to move information from Facebook to Mailchimp, or from Mailchimp when something hits Mailchimp over to uh, you know whatever AdWeber to Mailchimp or whatever you're using, it, it'll move the information over for you. Um, so I mean, and in, in, in terms of like, what are the best zaps? I mean, that's all relative to, you know, what platform and what program and you know what services any particular agent decides to sign up for. Um, I hope that answers your question. All right, let's see what's next. Yeah, someone else said the scripts weren't working for them. And, and Matt, just as a a comparison, when when. When uh, William says, and, and, and that comment says they're not working in some areas, my response rate, my engagement rate on Riley is a 66.67% response yeah. rate. And, and, I, and I think that's why it's great that they let you do the trial because in mine, mine was like a, a third of that. And, and you know, and, and it's just, it's not that there's a problem with the service. It's because the ones that were responding, they were pretty good conversations. It just wasn't enough for me personally to keep it running. Um, so, you know, I would think forty to fifty percent or higher is that would be worth it for me. So you know, just you know, test it out, see if it works for you. It's it's worth a shot. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry, allergies are bad here today. Um, it's worth a shot to see if it works, and it's relatively inexpensive when you consider that you're you know you're out working with clients and they're working with your clients as an extension of yourself. It's what ninety nine bucks a month. Um. And just an FYI, guys, the, the tools that we talk about here, we don't – there's no affiliation. We're just realtors that use these tools, so at any given time, we can bring up another tool. Um, so Maggie asks, how do I make my – make sure the Lion Desk texts are being delivered? Maggie, that's under the customer's profile. Under the text section, you can see what text message are being, uh, have been sent or have been kicked back, and it will tell you whether it's been uh, been kicked back. Um so, you know, whether uh, receiving a response or not, I, I can't gauge, you know, a particular market or whether a lead will respond or not. 
Um, but I mean, if you're not receiving response to text messages, you guys can't rely on the drips alone. The drips are great. You know, tools like Riley are great. Email is great, but it's not as good as getting them on the phone or getting them in person. Um, Joni asked how much Riley is. I, I was correct when I said $99 a month, right, Lewis? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So let's see. Scott. Okay, Scott posted a link to Riley there. If you guys scroll up to the chat, Scott posted a link to Riley. If you guys want to check it out, uh, you're welcome, Maggie. Oh. Christine. All right. How do you get leads to set up the meet after you have followed up and followed up and have a good conversation? I'm sorry, guys, I'm reading this, though. My chat box is tiny, so I'm kind of having to scroll down as I read. What, uh, what have you found successful to say to get them to agree to meet up? Um, you know, again, I think that's really relative to every particular agent. Me, myself, I, I haven't done <clears throat> a lot of calls in the last few months because I have an ISA that's doing that now. But, um, you know, when we call them, we're, we're talking to them about uh, the particular offer, whether it's, you know, we're offering them a list of, you know, foreclosed homes or a list of price reduced homes or whatever the offer is. Um, you want to talk to them and you know, get with them and talk to them about that, find out what they're looking for, find out when they're looking and offer to take them to coffee, offer to, you know, bring them your buyer's guide, you know what I mean? Things like that. That's how you're going to get in front of them. I think the problem with, <clears throat> with agents is quote unquote getting in front of a lead means that they have to be sitting down and having some, you know, a ton of dialogue, you know what I mean? Getting in front of a lead to me means them just allowing me to come drop off that buyer's packet, even if it only takes 60 seconds. Once they've seen you and you've provided value, in my opinion, that's what matters, and it makes it easier for you to follow up with them in the future. Uh, Lewis, you can piggyback that if you want. I agree. Uh, you, you have to give them something of value. And, and, and what, what I'm finding is after I'm getting them to engage in, in conversation, you know, uh, like so my first follow-up is usually with Riley. I do get them on the phone as well. I send them information of value, and I, I start nurturing that thing, that, that, that relationship, and they see that I'm interested in, 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 in what they're looking for. Uh, they'll meet up with me. You know, I, I'm not having any problem at all with that. You know, I have, you know, like anybody, I have a few bogus leads that come out or some people who are un, just unresponsive, but those are the people you, you know, you put on a drip or something like that. But for most practical purposes, the if you're giving them something of value and you show them that you're really caring about what they're looking for, they'll meet you. Exactly. <clears throat> That's exactly it. And even if they don't, <clears throat> you know, find out where you can drop that information off. <clears throat> Maybe strategically wait to drop it off until you see a car in the driveway. You know, knock on the door. They're probably going to answer the, the door. You know what I mean? And at that point, excuse me, guys, at that point, it's your job as an agent, as a salesperson to – to go and spark that conversation and, and have that conversation with them. So, um, all right. So let's see. Sarah asked, is Riley or Lion Desk better for a new agent? I'm reading these questions out because they're, they're not the same type of tool. Ry Riley is an extension of your CRM. You got to think about it like that. It can integrate. Riley is simply uh, a human based service that responds to your leads when they come in. It's not replacing your CRM. Um, so we, and we all, I think the ones that are using Riley are doing a mixture of the two. They're auto responding to texts. The auto texts are going out. The auto emails are going out. So it's a mixture. It's a multi-touch system and it's just an extra way for them to, to talk to the client. <clears throat> uh, Carol asked. I utilize them. Go ahead. I utilize them as an ISA. I don't, I don't have the funds to pay for an ISA. So I utilize them as my ISA. Right, right. All right, so let's see. Carol, are you calling leads from other sources as well? If so, are you scrubbing those those numbers? Carol, um, I don't really scrub any information. I, you know, the leads come in, we call them. If they're bad, we move on. You know what I mean? Um, from the leads I get on Facebook, and I think most of the people that have trained with me can attest that the bulk part of it is is – accurate information um i mean you're gonna occasionally get the people like oh i got two bad leads i mean i i you know 
my tra- I would be lying to you if I said, oh yeah, my trading gets a hundred percent accuracy, and you're going to get a sale on every call. I can't close a deal for people. I can definitely get you the leads, but I'm but I'm sure Lewis and many others in here can can attest to the fact that the leads come in. They're decent leads. They're closable leads. I close deals all the time from mine. Um, other people in the group are doing the same. Um, you know, again, it's just really about how hard you work these leads. But no, I, I don't waste a whole lot of time on something with bad information because uh, I feel like if that lead truly wanted to be contacted and wanted and, and there was a chance to work with them, they would have put the right information in. So, um, Lewis, if you have something to add there, you can. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, they're, they're, you you know you get you get some really good closable leads out of this and and most of my stuff now I'm focusing on on these sort of ads and I'm pulling back from my other my other marketing I really am uh, this is this has worked out excellent for me yeah I know there there are a few that have you know there there's more than a few that have left other companies behind I'm not going to say names on this on this call but you guys probably know what I'm getting at um, and you know, that's your choice. I've never told people to, you know, completely get rid of your other lead sources. I just tell them that this is a good way for you to decide whether you need them or not. Right. Um, so Janet asked, do I ever use pace, Facebook power editor instead of ads manager? What are the differences? I don't overcomplicate the, the training because power editor is not for everybody. I personally don't need it to do what I do to do the training. I don't, I don't need it at all. And, and most people in here don't. Um, you know, once they go through the training and learn how to use Ads Manager and learn how to do the right targeting and the right types of ads and automation, that gives them the ability to do this themselves moving forward. That's the whole purpose. Um, let's see. So that's the end of the question so far. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys something while I wait for a few more questions to come in. Um, if anybody has any, feel free to ask them, and I'll switch back over to look at them here in a little bit. So let me see if... Wesley's on Wesley's on the call, so he's not on the call. So there have been a few that have asked me about listing boosters. Some of you on this call probably saw this the last time. Um, you know, my lender, the one I work with, was on this call. Doug Laney. Um, I only use certain portions of listing booster. It, I'm, there's a whole lot more to it than that I use. But for example, you know, you can add your listings which is one of the things that I do a lot. So I've got, you know, right now I've got a lease listing in here. I've got a, my current listing that I just picked up off of one of my leads in here, and I've got the web capture on. So what that, what that does for me is it doesn't get me phone numbers, which is fine. I don't, I don't care because it's, it's free, right? So I will – let me find the, the code to this uh, – the link to this real quick. So my virtual tour um, – where is my link real I'm going to try to find it so I can show you guys kind of live um, what this looks like. There it is. Okay. So I take this link right here. Okay. And let's go over to Facebook. Let's put, let's, I'm just going to pop this in here. Like you can put your, you, can, you know, you can put your fancy ride up. You can, um, Add your listing in here. It's gonna give it's gonna give everybody all the information information they possibly need, um, and the price. And it's gonna do a virtual tour for them. It's gonna let them look at basically everything that is uh, on the MLS. So I'm just I'm posting this up just to see if I can test this out with you guys on the phone, um, on the webinar. I'm just gonna post this to my to my personal page. So let's go ahead and go back to Listing Booster, and we'll wait for that to see if it does anything. <clears throat> when you're in your dashboard, you have the web capture on, you post this to free groups, you post it to your page, you ask your friends to share it. When people go to that site, they are going to see – here, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. They're going to be routed here. They're going to be able – now, and then it's going to tell them to connect with Facebook, continue with Facebook, or enter their information. Continue with Facebook. It lets them in, but it automatically pulls my email address from Facebook. And I have it connected. Um, uh, Linda, this will probably answer your question, for example. I have my listing booster connected to Zapier, and I have every lead that comes in through Zapier automatically thrown into my conversion platform. So 
this will show you, um, you know, my current lease listing, right? Mm -hmm. And then when a person does that, here's the lead I receive. It, now, again, it doesn't have a phone number, but that's fine. I'm not paying for it. But in the mm -hmm. last 24 hours, I go in here, I go to my web lead section. I've got 94 leads, all email. For And as a matter of fact, one of these responded back and said, oh, this house doesn't have a, a home with a pool. That's not what I'm looking for. My ISA immediately responded and said, well, I can help you find that. He's in the lobby right now pulling searches for her, and they're they're working on finding a home with a pool, $300,000, somewhere in that range. And we're going to end up working with this lead. So no lead's a dead lead just because you don't have you know, all the right information, although I don't go in and, sc and scrub that out. Um, doesn't mean it's dead, and that's that's the that's the reason why you want to have the drips that that go on, the auto texts that go out, the follow up calls, and you know you have to it, you have to be on a multi touch system um, if if you want to convert a lead. It, you know, leads are hard these days. There's 150 agents on every block trying to get these leads. You've got to be the reason why they choose you. You know what what's going to set you apart. So. Anyway, now in the other, there's there's a few other things in here. Like I use the text, the writers on my signs. Um, so they've got the sign writers. You know the whole text. You know will will 84 to whatever number, and it'll and it'll text them back this link, the price, and the description to their text message, and then it all and it automatically sends me a text message, and it says cell phone number, you know one 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 whatever it is inquired about your property at XYZ, you should probably give them a call. So now I can call that person and say, hey, uh, I know you're probably still sitting in front of the property over at 904 Timberwood. You know, how can I help you? Are you working with an agent? All right? Oh, no? Great. Well, I can help you out. If they don't buy that property, that's whatever. Now you have a buyer lead, right, to go and, and work on, on a, you know, from another angle. All right. So, does anybody have any questions about about that? I'm going to scroll up through these questions here. So, Linda, let's see. What if you have two targets in Facebook ads that can uh, – can the target be used to interchange – used interchangeably with any ad to create in Facebook ads or Power Editor? Again, I don't use Power Editor. I mean, I know how to use it, but it's not a part of my program. Um, it's not something that I need, and I, I need a little bit more clarification on that question to, to understand what exactly you mean. <clears throat> um, Carol, I was asking if you call people from sources other than Facebook. No, for me, Facebook is my only lead generation source, except for Listing Booster, and I don't really consider I, – I would not consider it a major lead generation source unless it's something I'm paying for. Um, so, so no, that's, that's really it, just Facebook. Um, I don't actually really need another source. I'm, I'm picking up quite a few deals through Facebook. I just picked up that close to half a million dollar listing through Facebook. Um, Christine, do you ever boost posts that have been populated on your page? Do you target that the same way? Christine, I used to. I don't really – I don't boost posts anymore at all. I prefer – and and not, not so much that I prefer, but the numbers tell me that doing it with the forms and, and the right types of – uh, landing pages, if you choose to do that, which I don't use anymore, is the right route to go if you want to collect the right data for the lead. Now, here, here's a live example. I posted that to my personal page, and that's a lead that just came in from it. So now she'll be on my drip. She'll either tell me to take her off at some point, or if she's looking for a house, she may respond to me, but she's on my friends list, and now I know somebody on my friends list is looking for a property. And as soon as I get off of this call with you guys, I'm going to message her and ask her if she has any questions about the house. And, and that right there, oh, okay, no, you don't need any help. Well, I'll tell you what, if any of your friends need anything or your family, I'm here to help. Thank, you know, I always try to help my friends on Facebook. Boom, now you got a friend. Lewis, you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think you got that good. Okay, um, let's see what's next. Christine, okay, Janet. Oh, Janet, that's just a... Okay, so the toilet seat. <laughs> she said the toilet seat's up on the listing. <laughs> it's it's a lease listing. Um, you know, I got to be honest with you guys. I don't know how you guys do lease listing pictures, but I don't pay to have those done. And 
or things like that. I just take them. So I'll, I'll own that one. That was my fault. I took that picture. But it doesn't matter. I still got that thing leased out. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Sarah, if someone says they are working with an agent, how do you respond? Do you just give up and move on? Okay, you know what? That's a great question. Probably the best one we've had on the call so far. I think the biggest mistake agents make is assuming that an agent that another agent has a signed buyer's rep agreement. I work I work with leads all the time. If I'm paying for a lead that comes through Facebook or any other source, um, you know, which I don't, but if I was you guys and, and, and you get a Zillow lead or whatever it is you decide you want to pay for, and I go that person goes, Uh, oh, I'm working with an agent. To most people, working with an agent means they've talked to an agent on the phone a couple times. If they don't have a signed buyer's rep agreement, oops, your fault. You should be doing your job as an agent. So I asked them, have you signed a buyer's rep agreement? Pretty simple, straightforward. Oh, no, I haven't signed anything. Okay, great. Well, here's what I do. I offer up to $1,000 credit towards closing, if you can do that in your state. I can do it here. For all first-time clients that work with me, guess what happens eight out of ten times? That's my lead now, right? Let's call it what it is. We're, we're agents. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. If you're not getting the paperwork signed and those people are hitting your ads and coming to you, then the agent they're quote-unquote working with isn't properly doing their job and getting the correct information to that client or they wouldn't be asking for information on your ad or on Zillow or anywhere else. Let's see. Tina, so when you get this lead from Listing Booster, so you just email them back. So here's the beauty of that. I only post that link into Facebook groups and on my personal page or or somewhere else on Facebook. But the underlying, you know, the silver lining there is <clears throat> most people just hit continue with Facebook. It's pulling their information from their, pay, their, their email from their Facebook page. So I just go and if they're not a friend on my Facebook, I just go and type in their email address in the search bar, find their profile and send them a message. I don't, I don't need to, and I just have it copied and pasted. Uh, standard message that, that that's really kind of personal. It doesn't seem like it's an automated type thing. A lot of them respond, you know, and then I friend them on Facebook, get some dialogue going, and now I've got a potential lead sometime in the future if they ever need anything. That's my whole goal. I'm sure you guys have seen my friends list. It's like 4,000 people long. I only know like 400 of them, maybe. But, you know, my network's bigger, and when people need something, they're going to think of me. Because I talk to them all the time. All right, let's see. If people are not willing to talk or respond, uh, are they able to block your pop-up? So you are they able to block your pop-ups? So you don't know. To, I'm not sure what you mean there. Did, Lewis, are you picking that up? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what that's geared towards. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm I'm trying to get that one. I'll read it. Yeah. Did you did you hear what I said, or do you need me to read it to you again? Yeah, read it. It says, if people are not willing to talk or respond, are they able to block your pop-ups so you don't notify them? I'm not. I don't know what that means. Um. Maybe they're confused. Maybe they think that part of what the ads are are pop-ups, and they're not. Yeah. No, um, they're not pop-ups. They're just dark ads. They're ads that you don't have to post to your page that Facebook attaches to your business page and automatically sends out that you're paying for. Um, Scott, Charles, Scott, I, you know, I've been trying to, I think I'm saying your name right. I hope I am, man. Um, do those listing booster leads then automatically import to you? Yes, they do. If you have the setup right. So I have my listing booster account set uh, to connect to my conversion. That's the CRM I choose to put them in. Um, I do use Lion Desk as well, but I but, but conversions my main, you know, my main squeeze. That's 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 the one I like to work out of the most. So, yes, they all go into there, and I and I hashtag everything listing booster so I know where they came from. Um. So Linda says I have old ads in Facebook. Can I use the target that was recently created with any ad I have already created? It. Um. Yeah. I mean. You can. I mean, if you've taken the training, so you know that there's certain things you need to look for. It's, it's more than just the targeting. The targeting is great and, you know, the end-all, be-all, obviously, but you also have to make sure the ad is good and it's catching people's attention. But not 
you know, the targeting, the general, the, the targeting I use is, is, it's pretty heavy, but there are certain things depending on the market, depending on the area that I add or I take out, you know, for, for example, if you're targeting a first time home buyer, you're not going to target homeowners because they already own a home. All right. If, if, you know, the obvious things like that, you definitely want to take out. Um, but like, like Lewis said earlier, there are, there are certain types of ads and certain types of situations where you want to use an income bracket, maybe. Um, just because it doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for him or someone else. Um, all right, I'll I'll stop uh, advertising my listing to you guys. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What's the next question? Yeah, okay, so Maggie's saying that she'd ask if they'd sign anything. Sarah, let's see. Sarah, when you say you've been told the opposite by your office, um, what, what which question are you referring to? I'm just I'm just want to make sure I'm clear. All right, so Liz, if you're posting to a group, will the lead, I'm, I'm assuming you mean import into Zapier, if it's just in a group. It doesn't matter where the lead comes from. Once they click on that link and they go to your website and they click continue with Facebook, the lead's, the lead's going. Now, this does not mean, so when you get this email, this is just Listing Booster saying you have it. In order for it to up, upload into your CRM, you have to create that zap. Now see, there's this one is there's Maribel, and there's a second email I get saying Zapier sent her into my conversion with Listing Booster, and I hashtagged buyer and buyers because those are those are my drip tags. So now she is in my con, my conversion on a drip campaign, and she's already been sent an email. All right, let's see. Tina, it sounds like a great idea. I'm looking into them on Facebook. Okay. Are, okay, so there's clarification. Now, now, are they able to block your pop-ups? Are they able to block your page? I don't, I don't know if, if you're able to block a page on Facebook. I mean, you can always unlike it or, uh, you know, unfollow it or whatever. But, um, and, and I believe if you see an ad, uh on your timeline, you can click the little arrow in the top right and hit, I don't want to see this anymore, which, you know, that's, that's available for whether it's an ad or whether it's just a person's post. Um, so, you know, I guess the question the answer there is uh, kind of neutral um, in regards to what you're talking about there. Um, all right. So, okay, good. We know that I'm saying Scott's name, right? That's good. All right. So Sarah Cloud, about a about a lead saying they already have an agent. I kept getting different answers by other agents in my office. Okay, now I know to ask if they say, of course, absolutely. If agents in your office are telling you not to ask if they've signed a buyer's rep agreement, those agents should stop being agents and stop being salespeople. There's like wait tables or something. If you're not asking those questions, you're not making money. And then if you hear, yes, I have a signed agreement, great. Oh, okay, you're already working with an agent. Well, good luck. Have a great day. End of story. You haven't violated anything by asking them if they've signed a buyer's agreement. In fact, you're doing your job. Um, Tina, conversion for me right now, I don't know if it's changed. It's $499 a month for three seats, so for three agents. Um, and you get the front-end website. There's a lot of difference between conversion and lion desk. I I prefer Lion Desk for a lot of the people <coughs> who take my training because not most agents want to spend four ninety nine a month on a CRM by themselves. Um, but if you can afford it, you get the front end website, you get the CRM, you get the countless things that conversion does, and you and you know if you can split it with two other agents, then then you're winning. That's what I do. All right, so that's the end of the questions. Um, we're about 45 minutes in. I don't have anything to add from a tools perspective. I wanted you guys to see Listing Booster. Uh, you guys understand what, what Riley does. Does anybody have any other questions before we uh, before we end this here? Let's see. So Carolyn says, I have no listings. I'm a new agent. How do you feel about using other agents' pictures from their listing to promote? That's a bad idea if you don't have permission. Um, you know, in fact... And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but most agents that have a listing and use those pictures, especially if they paid for the pictures, they don't own the rights to those pictures the photographer does. So the only person that has rights to use the pictures are that particular agent. 
um, someone in, in my office found that out the hard way recently, or my old office rather. Um, now, if it's a listing and that agent owns those pictures, they took them, and you get permission via email where you can prove it, and they say okay, then you know have at it. But I would definitely cover myself. I'd, I'd hate to see you get a fine for something so so small, but also major as using someone else's picture. Um, Lewis, if you have if you have anything to add, please you know you can jump in anytime. No, I'd I'd be very careful about that too because you can you can get lots of trouble with the pictures. Let's see. So should I hire someone to set up and and manage my SEO, or is that what you do? With? No, I don't do SEO or website stuff. So I, I do Facebook leads training, um, show you how to automate everything, um, the right types of ads to use. And I think I think people kind of misunderstand the concept of the training. I, I'm I'm not offering the training for the sole purpose of setting up one ad for you. The ad is 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 almost irrelevant. It's to show you what what types of things that people look for and the type of ads you should do me launching that ad, the ad, one ad for you on, on your page is just kind of a bonus to the, the, the training. The training itself is designed to help you understand and it's recorded how to do this on your own, how to continue to do it on your own and not spend a ton of money with companies that quote unquote do it for you and take the burden off and, then you end up chasing your tail after a bunch of what's your home worth leads that, ap that go absolutely nowhere. And I think a lot of you in this group have fallen victim to it. I have when I was first into the business and taught myself how to do this. Um, and that's what I want you guys to avoid. And, and, and in fact, a lot of the people in this room, I've told them the goal for you, the goal for me is to make sure you don't even have to come back to me for training. I don't want you to have to spend money. This isn't my main business. I, I'm, I do real estate. I'm pretty successful. In real estate, I'd like to consider, I mean, you know, I'm still, quote, unquote, a newer agent, I guess you can consider that. But, you know, I also do investing on the side as well. So I really do this for the love of it and helping people and, and making sure that you guys don't get sucked out of 10 grand, you know, over three or four months by somebody and get nothing in return. Um, so Ginger said, you said you would not train anyone near my location. Do you have a mile radius? No, that's not the case. It's not. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not saying I'm. I'm not going to train anyone near your location. I don't cross the ads. So if I do one ad for for somebody over a particular vertical or a particular type of offer, and someone in your area within a you know 20 mile radius or something is wanting to do an ad, I would do a completely different type of ad, completely different type of offer for them. So I mean, if if I if I didn't train, if I told somebody. I'm only going to train one person in Atlanta. I'd only be able to train a hundred people across the country. You, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so that's that's how, but that's how that works. So, you definitely won't see people with the same ads in your area running. They'll they'll be completely different. All right, let's see. Looking to see if there's any other questions. Um, uh, Carol, um, the this whole conversation is recorded. So once I post it into the group tonight, you'll be able to go back and, and review everything that was that you missed on the call. Let's see. Would it be worthwhile to hire? Would it be worthwhile to hire an SEO person? Uh, for me personally, it, it's not a. That is not something that. It for me, it would be worth doing. Um, I wouldn't do it. Lewis, you want to add to that? Um, I don't do Google AdWords. I don't. I don't spend money on stuff like that because the whole being first on Google listing, in my opinion, doesn't really do a whole lot for you these days anymore. Especially when you're a realtor, um, you've got to get in front of these people and get their information. Yeah, I, I didn't either. I, I spent some money on SEO a while back, and it, it really didn't benefit me. Uh, and, and I that was that was one of the things I dropped. Um, right. Right. Exactly. Um, all right, Janet, if you have your ad running for up to age 55 with a new pick and an ad, an ad downsizing show or an older, older couple for age 56 running simultaneously, most doing well. I, I don't know what you mean there. Uh, oh, I have your ad running. I thought she said if I have your ad running. Okay. Um, okay, awesome. Well, hopefully that's doing well for you. Let's see. See, there's another one. Just posting to my page, I'm getting leads into my system. And I don't, again, I don't, I don't care if I have their their 
stuff. I've got in the last 24 to 36 hours, I've gotten over a hundred new emails into my system on drips and we've got a live deal out of it for free. So, you know, I, I would highly recommend you start using this tool. Now listing booster is something I don't believe you can get on your own. Um, this is a lender tool and then the lender has to give you access to it. Um, like Hancock Mortgage is the one I don't know where they're based out of or I mean or where their their locations are. I just know that that's where my guy works at and I I work with whatever lender that my guy works at cuz he's the one I prefer to work with. But you can ask your lender or a few in the area if they offer listing booster and I believe it's like 12 bucks for the year. You just have to give your lender 12 bucks and it's done. And you have it. So um I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, all right, I don't see any other questions. I'll wait another five minutes or two minutes to see if anything else pops up here. Um, otherwise, if anybody has anything to say, comment. I'll take you off mute. You can ask. Um, and if not, then uh, you know we're done for the day. Lewis, you have anything you want to add? No, sir. But uh, other than you know, hey, if and uh, if if you haven't tried look uh, Williams. Uh, William Rainey, I mean, it, it really, it really is helping to transform my business. I, I can't say enough good things about it. I appreciate that. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Thank you, Joni. You have a good day as well. Carol, likewise. Eldrick, pleasure. Christine. Um, I don't know what your first name is, but Holt. Uh, if you have me on Facebook, I'll I'll talk to you about that through through chat. Um. Just uh, send me a friend request. Uh, it's William Hegman, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-H-E-G-M-A-N-N. -N. You can find me, and then uh, we can talk about that. All right, anybody else questions? Let's see. Eldrick, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Tammy, likewise, looking forward to our meeting as well. Make sure I got you. Make sure I got you here. <laughs> All right. You got it. All right, you got it, Angela. Thank you. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and end the call since nobody else has, uh, has any questions. I will download the video. It takes a little while, and then I'll get it uploaded and posted into the group sometime later on this evening. You guys have a great day. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lucia. Take care. You too, sir. Thank you.